Hi everyone and welcome to our docker series by appsec engineer. In this series we will start by understanding what docker is and why it's become such an essential tool in the modern software development. We will then dive into the different types of attacks that can target the docker environments and showing you the real world scenarios through our detailed attack maps. But that's just the beginning. We will also explore container securities where I demonstrate the best practices to secure your docker infrastructure. Additionally, we will also delve into the vulnerable assessment and thereby to mitigate potential threats effectively. By the end of the series, you will have a comprehensive understanding of docker, the ability of secure your containers and the skills to perform through vulnerability assessments. So whether you are a beginner just starting with docker or a seasoned professional looking to enhance your container security knowledge this series has something valuable for you make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes next get started why wait in this series we will start by understanding the why what and how the first of our focus is why So why do we need containers? Now let us think about the our developer or as a tester or even as the operation team. So what do we all work with? Is software, right? And our main agenda is to provide a software that the end user, that is our consumer, can consume it. Now let us consider a web application. So what do the development team do? Is build the software, get it ready, and push it to the testing team. The testers in the testing team will definitely look for the application they are going to test. If there is some issue with the application, they are going to definitely send it back to our development team. However, if everything looks good and it's perfect, it has been now pushed to the operation team. In the operation team, once they have and they do their procedures, it is now then pushed to the servers, so we can have this running in our production environment. So this is true to most of our software companies and this is how they follow the cycle. The first step being the development, then testing and then the operation. However, so say suppose we have this requirement of setting up an end-to-end -end stack. This includes various different technologies like let's say web servers. We can have Node.js, Apache HTTP servers or it can be programming languages like python java go c++ so on and so forth or it can even be the databases like mysql mongodb or it can also be the front end frameworks like react angular or even our orchestration tools like ansible so it had a lot of issues developing this application with all these components So first comes the compatibility. So that is the compatibility with our underlying operating system. So obviously we will have to ensure that all the different services were compatible with the version of the operating systems that we are planning to use. So definitely there would be times where certain versions of these services are also not compatible with the operating systems. Then all again we come back to square one look for another operating system that can be compatible with the different services. The second thing we would definitely check be the dependencies. That is to check the compatibility between these services and the libraries and definitely the dependencies on the operating system. So we even have to check if one service requires one version of dependent library and wherein another service requires another version. that is something we need to check upon then comes the version there are two issues with the version the first one is as the development team i would have worked in different projects so i would definitely have versions of certain services packages already pre-installed in my system so whenever i provide it to the testing team they might not even have the version nor the package or the dependencies so this might be an issue for the tester to complete the run and he might come running back to the development team saying i'm not able to run so then the developer really have to scratch their head to understand what went wrong that's one part of the version the second part of the version is 
say suppose the architecture of our application they keep changing over time right we need to keep upgrading to the newer versions or to the components or change the database itself so and every time something change we can keep going back to the same process of checking the compatibility the dependencies of all these various components and the versions of these underlying infrastructure this definitely is a huge issue if our application would have grown 10x times the next issue we come across is the new resources say suppose our application is a massive hit it has really increased 10x times the users or the consumers right so we need more developers on board so we will find it very difficult to set up a new environment for them say suppose these developers have to really follow a large set of instructions and run hundreds of commands and finally set their environment just not that easy because they really have to make sure that they are using the right operating systems the right versions of these components and each developer have to set up all of these things by themselves isn't it really a big problem just not that we do have environment that we need to consider So say suppose we have different development test and production environments okay one developer may be very comfortable using one type of an operating system and the other may be using a different one so we cannot guarantee the application that we are building upon would run the same way in every environment right and so this really makes our life very difficult when it comes to developing building and shipping the applications So we need like something that could help us with the compatibility issue and definitely something that will allow us to modify or change these components without affecting the other components and even help us modify the underlying operating systems as and when required and that search landed us on something interesting called docker So with docker you will be able to run each component in a separate container that is which has its own libraries and own dependencies i understand you might be hearing certain words like docker container for the first time definitely don't worry we got you covered just hold on for a few more minutes so as i mentioned they have their own libraries and their own dependencies so we just have to build the docker configuration once and all our developers could now get started with a simple command called docker run irrespective of what underlying operating systems we have definitely all of these things run all you have to need is to make sure you have docker installed and definitely it is going to run